So as I've said at the start of the project, we are remaking pretty much everything, including the impeller that I made last time. And that is because, as one of my friends pointed out, that it's actually spinning the wrong way. So the impeller is spinning clockwise, and that is actually no good for the motor uh, mount that I made for the shaft. Uh, because the screw on a motor shaft is also clockwise, and so when it starts up, it can actually undo the screw and then the whole thing can risk falling out. So I'm actually going to remake the impeller so that it's anti-clockwise and also make it according to the research done by that blog, um, which roughly gave me almost the same dimension but just different height. And also this time I'm going to challenge myself even further with the impeller fins and they're not just going to be bent like this, they're also going to be bent like this. And so it's a little bit more of a challenging form, um, but I've got an idea to do it. So like the previous impeller fin, I'm making it once again by gluing multiple layers of wood together, except this time I'm using plywood instead of MDF, and also I'm gluing three layers together, and so it's a bit thicker. So as you can see, the shape of the impeller fin is twisted and in order to do that, I actually need to make the form twisted as well. And here I'm just sending that on the belt sander and then so that allows me to basically cut that sh twisted shape on the bandsaw. really well. You can see how it gradually changes changes angle until it's completely angled like that from 90 degrees. So that's perfect. Okay, for once something worked. Good sign, good sign. Now for the actual fins, I'm going to use some plywood to make them. Um, I was gonna use some hardwood but I realized I don't have any 3 mil hardwood on hand and I can't be bothered cutting it. So I'll just use plywood, it should be good enough. And the interesting thing that I found about this 3 mil plywood is that since the grain inside the middle ply um, actually runs, you know, uh, perpendicular to the grain outside, as we all know, um, it actually makes it bendable in ways that you won't expect. <laughs> like, the grain outside is running this way, but it is not very bendable this way. Does that even make sense? Kind of? And that is because the inside layer is just so much thicker than the outer layers and that makes the inside layer kind of dominating over which way it can bend more. So yeah, uh, when we cut the plywood we just have to make sure that we cut it in the right direction so that it's bendable more in, in that way. <laughs> I'm just gonna let this dry and work on the other bits. So now I am making the lid for the impeller housing, which is where the motor eventually mounts to. Holy shit, first time lucky. <laughs> And I was due to make another glow up. Alright, time to skip arm day again.
Well, I don't know what I was expecting, but surely wasn't expecting them to be off by that much. <laughs> oh man, looks like gonna have quite a bit of a struggle to get this lined up with the loader. So to fix that, I am thinking to use my router table or my makeshift router table and try and route that hole out similarly to how I did it with the ring for the robotic arm. Nice, that actually works and so now the hole is pretty much perfect and I can now make the impeller mounting hub thing. So about 72.9, 73 mil, okay. So while that's drying, I'll see what I can do with the most amount. Um, I've already got like a piece of um, particle board that I'm planning to use and I just need to find how long to cut it. So we'll be just Yeah. This is about right. So now it's time to figure out where to drill the holes for the motor. I'm just gonna line up with the marker made previously. I think that should be right. Okay. And now I'm using a bit of pencil lead to mark out the holes because the pencil won't fit. And back to some more blowing up. Distance away. 13. Perfect. Meanwhile, the impeller mounting hub has now dried, and I can finally cut it out on the bandsaw. I was just about to find a drill bit to drill this hole and I double checked the diameter of the motor shaft is 24mm but I don't have a drill bit that's 24mm so how the heck did I actually drill this hole on the old impeller? What the heck? Because this hole fits What? What the heck? I looked through all my drill bits and even the new ones I got recently and none of them can drill 24mm but somehow managed to make a 24mm hole that's pretty much perfect 3 or 4 years ago oh my days so now the plan is I'll drill it through first with a 23mm hole and then I'm gonna use oh yes I'm gonna use this deep ridge tool and then hopefully it'll be small enough to go through the 23mm hole and just enlarge it by a little bit hopefully it'll work I didn't even have a lathe back then, what the heck? How the heck did I do it? <laughs> oh, I just do be like that sometimes. Alright, new plan. <laughs> so I'm just using the regular cutter, but I've just extended it way out. Hopefully it won't shake too much. And then I've got it adjusted on quite a... a strange setup so both of them are pointing the same way so I can get extra travel because this doesn't give me enough travel and then basically I'm just gonna advance in and advance down it's just barely long enough to reach the other side barely holy shit that's a good fit yeah it's gonna fit 
<laughs> I'm just fitting it in. It actually left a mark for where the key is, as you can see at the scratch marks here. Barely. Barely on the camera. Yes, there you can see it. And so I'll just cut out the key now. Yep, so the key fits quite nicely, it's very tight fit, which is good. Nice. Now I can finally start turning the hub through. Ah, shit. Oh yeah, I also need to change it to anti-clockwise. Mm. Ah, shit, I can't remember how to change it. Okay, I just searched up the model number and I found a wiring diagram for it. Yes! It's anti-clockwise. I don't know why I'm celebrating this so much. Because it should have been easy. I think I nailed it, I think. Ah, uh, except my chisel, which isn't feeling so well. It's heating up a bit. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. So that is what I'm gonna pretty much use to help line up the motor inside the lid. And once it starts spinning, the MDF should wear out enough of a gap to allow it to spin freely. Next up is the impeller itself. Looking forward to this. Basically we're doing what I did two years ago. I think I feel like I should make another mark just in case. Basically what I'm doing is screwing down those markers according to the marks on the paper template and then make a cut. Then I spin the uh, impeller around and to the next mark and make another cut. Also because I didn't have around a bit of the correct size, I had to make two cuts to get the correct width. Alright, kind of went well, not exactly smooth, uh, because I, as I was doing it, um, it just got more misaligned and misaligned with the paper template, which is not a good sign, uh, which means that I probably had some error that accumulated over time, yeah. Um, and for the second pass, I just relied on the first cut as reference instead of relying on the other cuts, which seemed to be producing the error on the first cut. Oh wow, that actually fits really well. So I've taken the mounting hub from the motor, and I've also made this kind of centering piece that fits in the center of that fits in the hole of the hub. And in the center, I drilled a hole and fitted the nail or the screw, screw shaft that I used to uh, fit um, the impeller thing onto the base. And like that, their centers should be aligned almost perfectly. Actually, should I glue it right now? Hmm. Yes, I think I should glue it as well. Yeah. Now time for the fifth and sixth glue up. Holy Jesus, why is my shop in such a mess? Uh. 
while I clean my workshop, I think I'm going to end this video right about here. So thanks for watching and I guess I'll see you guys next time.